The opinions that are important to me uh, are entertained uh, almost exclusively by dead people uh, who don't vote. Uh, if I write a script, you know, I, I think if, well, if, if Mark Twain would like that, or if Dostoevsky would like that, or if my teacher, uh, Mr. Warren, if he would like it. And, uh, and the uh, awards are subject to the vagaries of, you know, uh, the flux, the ebb and flow of opinion and novelty. And, and so I, I try not to take it uh, too seriously when I uh, lose. And in the same way, you know, when I win it, it uh, uh, at Deadwood, for example, uh, which uh, to my mind, you know, is the most accomplished work I've done. Uh, I don't think has ever won anything, uh, and I, I, it really doesn't. I, I, I just try not to invest too much psychic energy. Didn't Ian McShane win? For his I think he won a Golden Globe. Golden Globe. And the last I heard, he's not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you, are you surprised at the success of Deadwood? It's canceled. I don't know where, where all the success is. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was very successful when it was on the air. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 again, I, I don't know how those things uh, work. What makes a show successful? What constitutes success? Uh, I try, as, you know, having admitted that I have, uh, you know, uh, my, my wiring is a little iffy. And so, uh, you're some writer for having. Uh, well, I, 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 I suspect actually, I, I don't think it's uh, in spite of. Uh, I think it's probably because of. And uh, what, what I mean by that is that it, if any writer, I think, must stand in a kind of emotional doubleness in relation to his or her culture or society. And. Uh, that is to be both inside and outside. And, uh, you know, if you're schizophrenic, <laughs> it's a walk in the park. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you don't have a big stake in the given reality of things, uh, you're more disposed, to, uh, you're, you're more hospitable to playing, to deconstructing and reconstructing and recombining things. I was interested in, you know, when I was doing cop shows, in uh, the idea of the disjunction between order and law. That is, uh, law, it seems to me, is an abstraction, which is an operative fiction. The cop suit, what the cop said to me was, the only thing you have to promise if I talk to you is, never show a cop given a suspect his rights, because a decent cop never gives the suspect his rights until after he's gotten whatever he's looking to get, the confession, the information, and so on. Um, the, uh, and the reason for that is that uh, order cannot be sustained so long as criminals or possible criminals are protected. When I took over Hill Street Blues, the, the cop used to say, uh, uh, let's be careful out there. So when I took over, I said I changed it to let's do it to them before they do it to us. I was interested in a more radical setting to examine that disjunction between law and order. So I wanted to go back in, in Rome. The uh, the law was the emperor's will, and the emperor was out of his mind. But, and cops even develop a separate language. If I say. Uh, to another cop, uh, I, I pursued the suspect around the corner. I'm saying he was black. That means he was black. If I say I pursued the suspect uh, as he fled, that means he's Puerto Rican. Wow. Now, I can't say that out loud because if a civilian hears me, I'm going to be brought up on charges. Every subgroup uh, which is empowered by accepting a, a, a role assigned to it by the dominant group in society develops protective language. To, in other words, blacks who feel themselves oppressed uh, 
take exactly the same word and give it the opposite meaning. Oh man, that chick's bad. That means she's good. And the idea is that I'm communicating to you whom I can trust and I'm obscuring my meaning to you who I can't trust. Uh, that fluidity of language interests me as a writer. So, but, but I was interested originally in faith as an organizing principle, as opposed to law. And this cop's son, uh, the, uh, this cop arrests St. Paul. And St. Paul converts the cop's son, who's an alcoholic. And St. Paul persuades the kid to volunteer for martyrdom and all of that. So, and, and what I was interested in was how the symbol of the cross, the abstract symbol of the cross, organizes behavior uh, and, and makes possible uh, a, 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 a society larger than the, say, the society that uh, baboons cannot organize in groups of more than 40. And the reason is they have to be able to see their leader. If they can't see the lead baboon, they just stand around and scratch their ass. But, but humans, if you see the symbol of the leader, they can organize. So if you have a cross, which is the abstraction of the Messiah, you don't have to see the Messiah. And you can organize big churches around an agreed upon symbol. Uh, when I couldn't do that, I said, okay, how about money, gold, as an abstract symbol, which has no intrinsic value any more than a cross does, but to the extent that people can agree upon a, a, an illusion, a general illusion, which is gold is worth two sheaves of wheat and four bricks, then you aren't restricted anymore to either, be, either uh, harvesting wheat or making bricks. You have a common species, a, a language, which is abstract enough to liberate behavior and you can start to have all kinds of stuff going on. So that's why I did that. The fact that the ego is the enemy of the imagination. Anything that you think about writing when you are not writing is a product of the ego and is absolutely wrong. 100% all the time wrong. And if you, if you take a step back and think about how much time you spend trying to purify yourself in order to get ready to write, uh, that that's like 95% of the time. And the reason for that is the ego has a stake in perpetuating the behavior that you've already engaged in. We do not think our way to right action. We act our way to right thinking. So what I do is I start writing. If I think about my writing before I start to write, what I'm really doing is justifying not writing. So, because what I'm, what I'm thinking when I'm not writing, I'm, I'm not writing, so I'm gonna find a way to keep not writing. So what I say is, I don't have the idea. I, it's not fully, I, it's not realized yet. Not only that, I don't have pencils, my pencils aren't sharpened, I don't have the right notebook, ba 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 Whoa, 11.45 already, time for lunch. <laughs> Here, here's the proof, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on you, you don't have to raise your hand anymore. Uh, and then I'm gonna call on you. The, but, but, here, but here's, and I'm gonna call on you, but here's the thing, listen, this is very important. Here's the proof of what I'm saying. I know it sounds, it's counterintuitive. Some of you here may not be in better at exercising, right? When you think about exercise, what you invariably say to yourself, you know, I'm too fat. Uh, and what's the point? I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'm too slow, I'm too this, I'm too that. And all you're doing is justifying the fact that you are not exercising. Now,